formed by pyramidal decrustation and bulbs formed by inferior olivary nuclear complex. This junction is having attachments for the three cranial nerves, the ninth cranial nerve that is glossopharyngeal nerve, multiple rootlets, multiple rootlets either sensory or motor, these rootlets Sorry, this is this junction of this pyramid and olive will give attachment to the multiple rootlets of the I will draw here hypoglossal nerve that is twelfth cranial nerve and the junction of this inferior olivary nuclear complex that is olive and inferior cerebellar peduncle. This junction will give attachment to the ninth cranial nerve that is glossopharyngeal, multiple rootlets of the a wandering big nerve that is vagus nerve. Tenth cranial nerve, very big nerve, also supply the viscera of the thorax and abdomen and the neck and a nerve which is also not a tracheal nerve because these fibers arising from the medulla are only accessory to the tenth nerve that is vagus nerve, the true nerve which is formed to supply the muscles of neck are from the upper part of the spinal cord. So it is having rootlets from the junction of the olive and inferior cerebral peduncles and fibers coming from the upper cervical segments of the spinal cord. So here is spinal cord and rootlets from the ventral horn that is sensory that is motor entering in the foramen magnum and join the cranial part of the accessory nerve to form the 11th cranial nerve that is spinal accessory nerve. So, there are 12 cranial nerves and first two are attached on the prosencephalon that is cerebrum first and diencephalon that is hypothalamus, the second cranial nerve. From cranial nerve 3 to 12, 12 cranial nerve attached on the brain stem, third cranial nerve on the upper part or at the level of superior colliculi in the midbrain, the fourth cranial nerve on the lower part of the midbrain that is level of inferior colliculi, fifth cranial nerve, a big nerve having trigeminis known as trigeminal nerve arising from middle part of the ventral part of the pons, the sixth, seventh and eighth cranial nerves attached on the ponto medullary junction. Middle most is abducent that is sixth cranial nerve. Middle is facial that is seventh cranial nerve. Little most part on the ponto medullary junction is the eighth cranial nerve that is vestibulo cochlear nerve. And on the junction of this olive and inferior cerebellar peduncle, there is ninth nerve that is glossopharyngeal nerve a big wandering nerve that is vagus nerve on the middle part of the junction of the olive and inferior cerebellar peduncle and lower most fibers which are coming are the accessory part and fibers which ascend in the foramen magnum to join the cranial fibers are 
fiber of the spinal accessory nerve that is 11th granular in the junction of this pyramid and olive the rootlets multiple rootlets of 12th granular nerve that is hypoglossal nerve exit now how, how to remember these nerves which nerve is sensory which is motor and which is mixed here is a easy mnemonic to remember <coughs> remember this mnemonic some says says some says marry money but my brother says big brain matter more so remember this mnemonic to remember the functional components of the cranial nerves some says marry money but my brother says big brain matter more some says first and second are sensory says eighth is sensory marry money my and more these are pure motor nerves and brain big brother but these are both that is sensory and motor nerves so it is very very easy or it is not very difficult to remember the cranial nerve is sensory or motor it has become very very easy to learn or to remember the sensory or motor cranial nerves by this easy mnemonic now what is other big difference in spinal nerve and cranial nerves there are only general modalities in the trunk upper and lower limbs but there are some special modalities in the head and neck region of the body so when i say there are only four general somatic i will redraw the diagram of the neural tube again here is mental layer which is having the neurons and again here is the marginal layer having two sensory components that is general somatic afferent and general visceral afferent and two motor two motor and two sensory components general somatic afferent general visceral afferent general somatic efferent and general visceral efferent efferent are bringing impulse from the cns to the periphery and bringing the impulse from the periphery to the central nervous system are efferent now what happen in this brain stem now this is most straightforward approach 
which was said in spinal cord. Now this is opened from this dorsum. Here is sulcus limitans. So now this posterior median sulcus will divide in two lateral parts here, like this. And the functional components will be seven in number in brain stem. So this is posterior median sulcus which was open is here. Here is the sulcus limitans. And here are our four components of the spinal cord or the neural tube. So here is general somatic efferent. Here is general somatic efferent. This is only functional diagram. Not considered it as a anatomical because nuclei are seen in midbrain, pons, and medulla. So middle most part or median most part is general somatic efferent, then general visceral efferent, medial to the sulcus limitans, and here are general visceral efferent and general somatic afferent. This is general somatic afferent, general visceral aff general somatic and general visceral afferent because this is LR lamina. So these are sensory. This is, this is general somatic afferent and this is general visceral afferent. In same way, here is general somatic efferent that is motor and general visceral efferent that is visceral efferent or visceral efferent this is somato motor or somato efferent now what happened there are some special column also developed in this brain stem to meet the demands of the special senses or special organs in the head and neck region so three more columns will develop in the brain stem to innervate the parts of the head and neck which are having some special receptors or special efferent organs. So in this column, one more column, one more nuclei will develop. This nuclei which develop anterior to the general somatic efferent and general visceral efferent. This column is known as spatial visceral efferent, SVE. It will deal in detail in my next lecture on brain stem and pons and medulla. So this spatial visceral efferent, SVE column, develops in anterior part of this general Somatic and general visceral efferent. This is general somatic and general visceral anterior to both these columns. A special visceral efferent column also develops to innervate the muscles taking origin from the pharyngeal arches or brinkel arches. In this LR lamina, two special columns will develop to innervate the spatial somatic afferent because lateral to circle limitants all are afferent. So this spatial somatic afferent develops to innervate the hearing and balance. Hearing and balance. And one more nuclei. In this same nuclei will develop to innervate the taste sensations of the tongue and this column is known as spatial visceral afferent. Spatial visceral afferent innervating the tongue that is taste sensation of the tongue. So these screen nerves are having the spatial components also. On the other hand, spinal nerves are having only general components and these special components develop to innervate 
the spatial organs of the head and neck. In my last lecture, I was talking about the axonal flow, how these spinal nerves and cranial nerves work, or how these nerves function. As you all know, these cranial nerves and spinal nerves are collection of axons of the neurons. A neuron, a nerve cell, having a cell body or soma, or also known as pericarion. And here is axon hillock, initial segment, and here are multiple dendrites, arborized or tree-like. The multiple branching and rebranching is known as arborization. And here is an insulator or sheath of lipid and proteins, lipoproteinogenous. This sheet is known as the myelin sheet. And it is having branching at right angle. It is having branching at right angle and it is having a terminal branch which is having multiple branches. So it is having a nucleus, well-defined nucleolus, mitochondria, collections or aggregations of the rough endoplasmic reticulum to form nasal substance or nasal bodies or also known as nasal capsules, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, Golgi apparatus and lysosomes and some inclusions. So here are the skeleton of the soma and axon known as microtubules. These microtubules help in the flow of the substances, metabolites and organelles from the one part of the soma to the terminal part of the axon. This flow is known as axonal flow. Maximum flow which is seen is 400 millimeter per day or in slow conduction it is only one millimeter per day. Now, uh, this flow also having orthograde part or orthograde flow, also known as anterograde and a retrograde that is reversal of the flow. When this flow is away from the soma, this is orthograde flow. When it is against the normal flow that is against the orthograde or anterograde, this flow is known as retrograde flow. So some diseases, viral or bacterial, migrate through this axonal flow. The rabies, you all know, very dangerous and almost 100% mortality and having a well-known symptom that is hydrophobia. So rabies, is migrating from the exoplasmic flow through the this plasma of the axon and polio virus which is also a dangerous disease of muscles and neurons which lead to myelopathy and the residual paralysis of the muscles. Also migrate through this retrograde exoplasmic flow. But on other hand, one more disease I would like to discuss here is tetanus. 
tetanus is transferred from the terminal part of the nerve to the central nervous system through this endoneurium that is a layer of connective tissue in axon which is already covered by the axolema, neurolema and myelin sheath. So retrograde transportation of this rabies which is more dangerous when it is seen in head and neck region because axon's length is small and polio also migrates through this exoplasmic flow and tetanus migrate from the terminal part of the nerve to the central nervous system through the endoneurium that is a connective tissue layer. So now what is a synapse or synapse? What is a synapse or synapse? What is a synapse or synapse? As I have already told, neurons are contiguous, not continuous. One neuron is attached to the other neuron by some junctions known as synapse. This is one neuron, here is other neuron, this is the terminal part which is having multiple branching, here is arborization, here is arborization of dendrites to form a tree-like appearance. The terminal part of the axon, I will draw here, will dilate to form the presynaptic terminal or synaptic button. Which is having mitochondria and synaptic vesicles which are having the neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are chemicals bringing the impulse from the presynaptic button to the postsynaptic membrane. Here is the broadened part of the dendrite. Synapses are of two types of synapses. One is electrical and other is chemical. When cells are very close to each other, these forms come gap junctions. Ionic exchange or current flow through these gap junctions is known as this electrical synapse. These synapses, electrical synapses are seen in the neurons, especially an inferior olivary nucleus and this cerebellum. So synapses are seen, electrical synapses, synapses are seen in CNS and brain and the inferior olivary nucleus and these synapses can electrical synapses are also seen in cardiac muscles and smooth muscles and in nervous system that is cerebellum and part of the inferior olivary nucleus complex. So these are synapses formed between the two adjacent cells having a gap of 
थ्री नैनोमीटर थ्री नैनोमीटर और लेस एज यू ऑल नो और होपफुली यू नो अबाउट दी डोमेंस ऑफ द सेल्स सेल इज हैविंग द अपर डोमेन द बेजल और लोअर डोमेन द फोर लेटरल डोमेन्स सो दिस इज वन डोमेन ऑफ द सेल एंड अदर सेल विच इज कमिंग इन कॉन्टैक्ट ऑफ दिस सेल हैविंग थ्री नैनोमीटर ऑफ गैप आर क्लोज टू इच अदर फॉर्म द गैप जंक्शंस एंड दीज जंक्शंस आर हैविंग ए प्रोटीन नॉन एक् कॉनेक्शन टू कॉलम्स ऑफ कॉनेक्शन कम क्लोज द लेंथ ऑफ वन कॉलम और कनेक्शन इज सेवन पॉइंट फाइव नैनोमीटर दीज कॉनेक्शन कम इन कॉन्टैक्ट एंड आर फॉर द एक्सचेंज और ट्रांसफर ऑफ द सोडियम पोटेशियम कैल्शियम क्लोराइड एंड सम मेटाबोलाइट्स लाइक प्रोटीन कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स एंड लिपिड्स from one cell to other cell this type of synapse is known as the electrical synapse but the more important especially more important in this central nervous system is the chemical synapse or synapse so what is a chemical synapse it is a gap between the two cells processes or neurites more than 3 nanometer but in general terms it is about 20 nanometer normal it is 20 nanometer 20 nanometer the current flow which is coming from the soma to the axon is not transferred in the other part of neurite or neurite of other cell due to this fluid filled space so to overcome this problem there is some other method as you all know the action potential or electrical energy is coming from the soma to the axon i am talking about the general term axon and dendrite because there are different types of synapses one is axo dendritic that is the most common type of synapse that is Uh, chemical synapses are of different types that is exo dendritic exo axonic exo somatic that is synapse between the perikaryon or cell body and the terminal part of the axon or very rare type is dendro somatic and dendro dendritic so the synapses which are chemical are of different types exo dendritic most common or broadly seen in the central nervous system in most synapses exo axonic axosomatic dendrosomatic and dendro dendritic synapses so electro impulse that is action potential which is coming from the body or of this soma through the saltatory conduction i have already told that the sodium and potassium gated are exchange is seen only in the nodes of renvier 
So action potential jump from this initial segment to the one node of Ranvier, then other, then other, then other. Now this action potential, which is very rapid in myelinated neurons due to salted tree conduction. Now in terminal part, there is end of axon and initiation of the other neurites of the other neurons. So this conduction, which is in form of action potential, will reach here and there are synaptic vesicles having neurotransmitters or neurochemicals. These neurotransmitters are having a special character to bring the impulse from one neuron to the other neuron and are having capacity of a transducer. So this action potential, which is electrical energy, is converted in chemical energy or in form of neurotransmitter. At the same time, there are some calcium channels which open and this calcium channel opening will initiate the neurotransmitters or the trans presynaptic vesicles to rupture and fire the neurotransmitter in the synaptic cleft. This space between presynaptic terminal and postsynaptic terminal is known as synaptic cleft and this membrane is known as postsynaptic membrane. Which is having receptors And one more feature of this presynaptic button is here as thickening of this membrane in interrupted parts. And here is thickening of the postsynaptic membrane. So here are the receptors for the neurotransmitters. These receptors are of different types. There may be some acetylcholine receptors, maybe noradrenaline, maybe adrenaline, GABA, or maybe glutamate or glycine, and some very rapid and fast receptors like histine, histamine, and serotonin. So, on the basis of these neurotransmitters or neurochemicals, there are two types of synapses. One is symmetrical and other is asymmetrical. Asymmetrical, here is asymmetrical synapses and asymmetrical synapses are having a synaptic cleft of 30 nanometer, 30 nanometer and these are having two types of vesicles. One is small spherical vesicle, small spherical vesicles. These small spherical vesicles are seen in case of acetylcholine, seen in case of glutamine, glutamine, and these are also seen in case of some other amines and these are there are some other vesicles known as dense cord vesicles this is first type of asymmetrical and second type of asymmetrical is dense cord vesicles which are 